Hey, hello everyone. Welcome back to Good Knit Kisses where you can stitch your love into your next project. I'm so happy to have you this morning. Um, wow, it's a little bright. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if I should make a change here. Um, I hope you are doing well. Welcome. It has been way too long since we had a broadcast here. I have um, had a few bouts of being sick and then out of town. So it is uh, great to see you here this morning. Um, please, please hop on and say hello and uh, talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> if you have questions that you've been uh, longing to ask me uh, for a few weeks, please let me know. Um, as you jump on, uh, I'm so glad that you're here again. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, where we teach tutorials and uh, help you get your stitches in order and uh, let, you, let build help you build your skills and let your stitches soar. So, uh, good morning. Good morning, Lexi. Hi, I see you jumping on. Hey, good morning, Joanne and Heather. I'm trying to get my cord out of the way here. Hold on. Am I shaking? I feel like my, my thing is shaking here. <laughs> hey, Heather. Hey, Alicia and Allison. How are you? Hi, Iris. I see you jumped on. And good morning, Bridget. Am I am I too bright for you guys this morning? Is that too is that too much? I could lean over and grab that thing, but it's like too far away. You'll get you'll get a nice personal view of my neck. <laughs> hey, good morning, Eva. Oh my goodness. Did you guys enjoy having the um the live broadcast that I republished on Facebook? I had done some Instagram lives from Creativation Show. If you know um Creativation is um, if you don't know what Creativation is, uh, it was formerly Craft and Hobby Association, CHA, and now it's called AFCI, and it is um, a show for, um, basically for like stores to go and get the things that they want, like did the different brands. So like if a store wants to buy some Clover product or um, buy some jelly art stuff or uh, buy some yarn, get some, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, Anyway, that's where they go, and then I was able to meet with brands and other bloggers, and it was so cool to be able to meet up with people that I've worked with before online um, or chatted with or whatever, but I have never gotten to meet in person. And I got to tell you, it was so fun. It was very telling to see um, what our relationship was like or what we thought it was like when we met because, you know, people would like, meet with hugs or whatever. And uh, it was it was really cool. So, um, yeah, uh, that was that was so good. I'm so glad to see you guys. If you jump on, um, if you're on the replay, welcome to the replay. Um, you get to see all everything um, and you don't um, obviously miss it. But um, I love when you guys watch it again. By the way, uh, we are starting to upload all the replays from the very beginning, um, what we're calling season and episode. So the first season was 2016. I actually started a daily uh, live. I did it five days a week for a full month, <laughs> and then I kind of slowly backed down, and we got down to the one. But in 2016, in... Um, we started daily ones, and so every day had a different theme. And um, so the 2016 is starting to get uploaded now to GKK TV. You can actually go to that uh, channel and subscribe and get notifications. And uh, it's a great one to just let it play and um, listen to it while you're um, while you're stitching away. So if you want some company, uh, kind of your own um, your own stitch along there. Um, you know, just have fun stitching away and listen to that or put in your earbuds. Um, yeah, so that is uh, HTTP. So www.youtube.com slash GKKTV. So Good Knit Kisses TV, but just put the initials GKKTV and it's there. So now that we have over 100 subscribers, yay, I think we're almost to 200. Um, that channel um, now has a custom um, URL for that. So that was really cool. Uh, by the way, so we still have Good Knit Kisses running. And there is something happening with the YouTube Partner Program, and I just kind of want to give you guys a little housekeeping stuff. Um, if you like seeing my videos and you want to stay subscribed and get all the notifications when I go live, be sure and go to youtube.com slash goodknitkisses, click on that subscribe button, hit the bell icon, and when I go live on YouTube, you'll get that notification. But also, if you, um, you want to get the TV ones, um, the ones that are the shows playing, 
on replay and we're putting them all in order so you won't miss anything. Um, go to uh, youtube.com slash gkktv and click on that subscribe. Once I, um, basically I have like less than 30 days to get that channel up to a thousand viewers because um, they're going to take that channel off of the partner program. I'm one of those, it's one of those smaller channels. I've had this channel for a while and um, anyway, so it's having a um, issue and so I've got to get that um, up and running. I'm trying to get as many hours watched as I can. So if you enjoy watching and listening, um, I would love it. Um, I would like to keep that channel as a partner channel because it helps support me and to where that I don't have to have as many sponsored posts, um, sponsored videos. So that's um, some of that housekeeping stuff. Thank you so much, everybody. I'm going to come back and check all your um, all your comments here. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, some... Smyrna, Smyrna, did, am I saying that right? I'm sorry, good morning. Um, Lexi, the tatting was very interesting. So glad you enjoyed that. I really enjoyed it too. Um, my daughter and I um, we had been chatting about, chatting about tatting, <laughs> tatting chatting. Um, <laughs> she's my oldest that you've seen do a couple of videos. And um, we were talking about that and I said, oh my gosh, you could make some fun earrings or necklaces or whatever and um, embellishments. And so we were talking about needle versus shuttle. And so when I saw Carol up there uh, at uh, Clover and I said, can you talk to me about this? And so she gave me a little bit of stuff and I said, do you mind if I film something? Because I think my people would love to know you guys, you're my friends. So the friends wanted to know. And, um, and I'm so glad that I did that because you did want to know. <laughs> it, you know, it's probably one of my most highly um, watched and shared videos in like the short amount of time, which is encouraging to me because that means that um, I've, I'm understanding things that you guys are wanting to see. Um, I don't know if you're wanting to learn it, but you enjoyed watching it. So if you're wanting to learn it, let me know. It would be something I would need to learn, but actually she could learn and teach you guys. So anyway, hi, Med. Hi, good morning. And you, oh, I love you so much, beauty. Thank you. You're so kind. Hi, Cece, Rebecca. Good morning. Hi, Allison and Karen. Good morning. Good morning, Robin. Alicia says, I like the tatting video and the pom-pom video. Yes. And Clover, um, uh, the Clover, um, can't even talk. The Clover Pom Pom Maker was featured over at the Craft Yarn Council booth. Now, first of all, before I talk about the Craft Yarn Council booth, did you know that the Craft Yarn Council has loom knitting standards coming out? I have been working with them for like the last five years. Uh, they, they only convene like their, their bigger um, executive meetings and stuff like happen like every four years. I mean, they have some things that happen every year, but um, I've been... <laughs> I had contacted them starting like five years ago for a loom standard. So I've been on this for a while. And then um, about a year and a half ago or two years ago, they started contacting some more loom people so we can get um, a variety of opinions and responses. And so like, or maybe that was last year that they contacted people. Anyway, I've been working on it for a while. <laughs> anyway, so the loom standards have been agreed upon for now. And then more will come out later. But these are some basics. So keep watching the craftyarncouncil.com website. Or is it .org? Anyway, someone will correct me. So anyway, um, but yes, they showed how to make pom-poms. And there was one girl there. Um, she did um, this really cool, like, I think it had three colors, like a really cool striped pom-pom. So you got to check out those pictures. Um, if you're on Instagram, I have some pictures of her with with that. Um, if you want to come and follow me on Instagram, I know um, not as many people are, are following me on there. So if you are on there, just Look for Good Knit Kisses and, and hit the follow button and you'll see all my stuff. And I'm trying to be better about like the Instagram story. So like I'll go live real quick or I'll um I'll do and you'll see like um some more personal stuff in my live stuff because I don't want to put that up on here on this page. So if you're interested, um you get kind of a cool variety behind the scenes thing. So um, yeah, uh, Martha. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you. I, my daughter was just asking that. She says, hello, seven weeks till springtime. What are your plans? 
Martha, you're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. I love it. I know. I'm like, spring seems so far away. Um, my daughter's just like, it's so dreary outside. Um, I don't know. Um, my spring plans. Hmm. Not sure I can share my spring plans, but there are plans nonetheless. <laughs> What are your plans for spring? I, I continue to keep on yarning. Um, there's this new hashtag called while I was yarning. So if you're on, if you're on a Instagram or something and you like those hashtags, you can, um, put your stuff in like what you're making and hit hashtag while I was yarning. Um, hey, be sure and tag me at Good Knit Kisses so I can see your stuff if you're working on uh, things that you want me to see. Um, really, like, the things that are the patterns or techniques I'm teaching you, um, you know, I would love to see those. Like, contests and stuff, you know, <laughs> not so much, um, or things that, uh, you know, that kind of thing. But um, Or tag me in the comments if you just want me to see it. Just tag me in the comments of something that's true. Uh, if it's not something I made. But yeah, if it's something that I, I, it's a pattern I taught, I would love to see your work. Hey, Pearl, good morning. Hi, Corinna. And oh, there is that channel uh, link for Good Knit Kisses uh, TV. That's GKK TV. Good morning, Lisa. Hi, you're in Colorado. Ah, Colorado. Ah, it's like my second home. We go there w at least once or twice a year. Last year we went twice, spring break and then in the summer. So, hey, Kristen, another Kristen. Hey, Susan, good morning. Thank you, Iris, for subscribing to T GKK TV. Yay! Yeah, just put it on the background. I need to put, like, a, a playlist, and if you subscribe to the playlist, then, like, if you push play, it'll just keep going. So, I think it's kind of fun. I did that for myself the other day, or, like, the Grocery Girls. Do you guys listen to the Grocery Girls? Um, and you can just, like, listen to it in the background. Um, it's just kind of fun to have, like, it's almost like having your own little knitting circle right there with you. So, um, anyway, thank you for subscribing. Hi, Laura. Uh, Lori. Hi, Norma. I combined your names. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, thank you, Joanne. She says, watch for illuminating standards on craftyarncouncil.com. Good morning, Bernadette. Hey, Sherry in East Texas. I'm in North Texas. Uh, yes, you heard the new standards for yarn. Yes, new standards for yarn are coming. And then also the loom knitting standards are coming, too. My one-day... Um, and I totally said the wrong, um, I was on Marley's thing and I totally said some of the wrong, um, uh, needle sizes on there, but that's okay. Um, Marley Bird's yarn came out and I did a video on that too, but I would love one day for these, um, wrappers or ball bands to have, um, uh, like where you have the, oh man, I have, it's blown out, but where you have the number, um, you know, and you have like the, um, you have the needles or the crochet hooks. I would love a picture of a loom. And then it says what gauge loom that you need. Now, not how many pegs or anything, but just what gauge loom size, um, corresponds. Wouldn't that be the bomb? <laughs> um, that was wild how they made that hashtag. Yeah. Uh, Allison says, yeah, cause they had put, um, they had put, um, uh, yarn around nails and everything and the way she did it. Um, yeah, Kat did an amazing job. Hey, Cassie, good morning. Um, Lynn, what is the youngest age you've seen a little girl knit and crochet? I'm trying to teach my daughter. You know, Lynn, I am a firm believer. It is all up to the kid. Um, well, and your patience. Too. <laughs> um, man, this is bothering me. Is it too bright on your screen? Should I, should I do something about that? Um, the, um, so my kids kind of like learn in, in chunks and it depends on their, their age ranges. So like I've seen a little three-year-old do it, but it wasn't my three-year-old. Um, my son, when he was four, he was trying to like knit over stuff. So he wanted to take my loom and like knit it over. Well, he might've done that when he was three. Um, but yeah, uh, I think at the local shop here, they start teaching at age nine and, um, or is it eight? And that seems to be okay. Um, yeah, but I have two kids with like ADHD, so it kind of like, you know, 
was a little bit of a struggle. Um, yeah, <laughs> but it really, it really depends. I mean, I, I know some adults who are like, well, I don't remember not knitting or crocheting, um, because they were taught so young. Um, one time I ran into a little girl who I want to say she was five and she said she'd been knitting for a year and she had this knitting song and I, and I, it was too early on for me to remember, um, what the song was, but it was almost like someone taught her the special song for knitting. And someone may know that song and would write out the words for us, but I don't remember the tune. Good morning, Laverne. Hey, Teresa, you started working on the Crescent Boomerang Shawl yesterday. Way to go. That's awesome. Uh, Alicia, my aunt and uncle have an extra house in South Fork. Oh, yeah, that's a great town. Um, I have some friends with a house out there, too. They they rent that most of the year, but they live down here. Iris, you're in New York. Awesome. I love New York. Uh, let's see, Allison. Yes, that would be great to have it on the yarn band. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we would all love that on the yarn band, wouldn't they? Wouldn't we? Yeah, if it just said the um, the spacing between the the pegs, you know, like three eighths, like this one would say three eighths SG, and then this one would say this one would say five eighths. What is this LG? Yeah. So um, yeah, if if it just said that. Like, even a circle, and then it said that inside the circle or something. Um, that would be amazing. Um, Kasid, I was, I want to ask two matching hats and scarves for a silent auction. What pattern to do? Um, that is a good question. I have, um, hat and scarf. Do I have a hat and scarf combo that I've done as a combo? Let me think about that one. I have this hat and hat and cowl pattern um, that I've uh, that I've got going on um, that I did for the needles, which I am converting over to the loom, uh, but I don't have it necessarily done. I like doing a cowl because um, it's quicker. <laughs> it's, well, it can be quicker. Uh, yeah. So that one is um, this one. If I can. Oh, I can't reach it. I got. I got like a my. There we go. I have this one. With Fair Isle, that would be a good one because a lot of people like these um, simple Fair Isles. And there's a cowl to make that. Um, there's a needle version on my site. And you can, because it's in the round, you can use a pattern that's on needles and put them on the loom. And I'm making the, the loom one, but I've got kind of behind in making it. So this is, <laughs> this is the loom version. And I'm trying to get... I'm trying to get the rest of the hat made, but I have been working on other things and I had promised my, my mom had moved and um I had promised her like several pot holders and um uh <laughs> and and did new dish cloths and stuff and I've been working on those. I finally gave them to her last night. So I was like, "Here mom, you know." <laughs> so anyway, I'm trying to get caught up. And then I finished this video. We did the loom knitting video on this one. Uh, this is this is a portion. You see these step outs. Um, here's part of it. I thought I had my bag in here, but I don't. Um, this one right here for this week. This is the stadium stripes knit hat, and um, I've got it on the loom, and I've got it going in one direction on the loom, and then I've got it going in the opposite direction, so clockwise and counterclockwise. And those two videos are out. The blog is out, and in fact. <laughs> And Joanne, without you knowing, and she probably saw it already, um, I did the needle version written out over the weekend and just published it without actually having a video. Um, so this one's on needles right here, and it's just waiting. This is a stitch holder here, and then I've got the this part here. This I, I um, when I can, I knit my, I make my uh, step outs for my videos so I can um, video it quicker and edit it quicker. So um, anyway, that is ready. I could even demonstrate it. Um, here today, but um, I, w I wasn't sure if you guys would want to do a live needle video. Um, but yeah, so the needle version pattern is out. And um, that, the, the reason why I mentioned that is because you could use this and then um, for clue three 
for um, the Bernat Blanket Stitch Along from back in the fall. There's a loom version and needle version, and you can make that into a scarf and match. So you could make a matching scarf with this pattern, and on that back side, it'll just have this look. It has floats, but they're only like a slip stitch float, so they're only like one stitch long. So that would be a really fun um uh, that would be a fun one. Okay, this is this is a uh, 48 stitches here. So if you were just to do half, that would be how wide that pattern would be. Isn't that nice? So um, that would be a nice scarf. I would like that myself. Uh, Kristen says my three-year-old niece wants to learn, but she doesn't have quite the attention span yet. Just yet. Yeah. Um. You know, in in a three-year-old, I mean. It, for a young age, I wouldn't try to keep teaching them to cast on. I would just teach them the knit stitch, you know, get a good amount on there and, um, and just teach them just the knit stitch. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what I would do. I'm a little bright on my left side. Okay. Let me see if I can hold on. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> How's that? Sorry. I keep, I keep messing with that. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Alicia says there is a hashtag MG Modern Granny Square. Oh, yeah. Liz, I've missed you too. Thank you. Oh, you're so sweet. Uh, Martha, what size and type of knitting needle would you recommend for a beginner? That's a great question. Um, let me get my needle right here. Hold on. Okay, so I usually recommend a um a size like this is a size 11 and um this works on a super bulky six uh, five or six um but i've actually recommended even a 15 before um with a, a super bulky six and I, it's really dramatic i know but it's really good to see the stitches go um and you know it's nice and smooth um uh, something like this, this Bernat Softy Chunky. This is a six, I mean a five. Um, that's the baby one. But the regular one, this one, the Bernat Softy Chunky regular is a six. And you can use it with, it actually suggests using it with a US um, 11. You could use a 13. Um, but I've actually used a, um, a 15 before. Now, what I've used is these needles here. Like, that one's too big. Hold on. These are bamboo. These are actually my grandmother's. Um, I like the bamboo for beginners because the yarn grabs onto them and has a little bit more drag and it doesn't tend to just go like flying off. So like if you, if you give a beginner needles like this with metal, it's frustrating because it slides off. And also if you're doing one that's like small, like this size, this is a, what is this, a five? I got my bifocals. I, I, it's five on the end, US five. I, I don't remember the millimeters. But, you know, this one can be frustrating because the stitches are so small. You don't get that instant gratification, especially if you set, you're like, cast on 40 stitches. Oh, good grief. <laughs> if you cast on 40 stitches, yes, you get the nice repetition and stuff, but you can't see the work. And a lot of times, especially now, like people are so uh, encouraged by seeing something done quickly. Like they get, they're going, okay, my confidence is boosted. Um, I, I say just cast on like less than 20 stitches, especially if it's like a, a super bulky or something, um, maybe even 15 um, and then, and then as you knit, you can see it worked up really quickly. Um, again, you can use a, um, you can use a bamboo. There's also plastic. Um, I'm not sure if I have a plastic one nearby. You can't see that, but that's a plastic one. That was my grandmother's. Look at this. These are my, my grandmother's plastic ones. I think these are like a nylon or something. Um, I'm guessing they're a nylon. But they have like a plastic material, like this is a crochet hook, of course. But they have like plastic material like this. I think this is from, um, yeah, this one's a boy, and I think boy has some plastic needles. I don't like those as much, but they do have drag. Okay, um, drag is just slowing you down. You know, kind of like a car. <laughs> um, anyway, and then a super bulky six. But these needles right here, um, I like. Well, I'll tell you this: if you give someone Bernat blanket or something like that this stuff 
If you give someone this stuff, those bamboo needles are not so fun. You're going to want something like this. You're going to want a metal needle um, for stuff to go fast on this. But I don't recommend using that um, as your first one. Sometimes people grab like a boucle and they'll grab something dark. Grab a light yarn that's big. You can see the stitches. I know I'm like overemphasizing the point. But check out my beginner needle um, series. I, it actually starts with an overview video and I talk about the yarn and the needles that are going to be used and I talk about what's going to be in that series. But the cast on video is so it's an overview, then a cast on, then knit stitch, then there's a purl stitch, then there's bind off. And then the sixth video is I just talk about gauge. Now I don't, don't talk about all the things about gauge, but I do talk about it in case you're like, I need a reference video to go back to. <laughs> So, um, anyway, Megan says, you're so cheery. I love it. <laughs> hey, Unionport, Iowa, uh, Ohio, Iowa, Ohio, why, why, why you? <laughs> uh, hey, Lynn, she's eight, has ADHD, the loom. She tingles the arm, but she does fine with crochet hook and can slip knot and chain. Okay, awesome. Oh, you're also in Ohio. Um, yeah, eight's a good age. Yeah, my daughter's near that age which with ADHD, and it really just depends. I mean, it might really hold her attention. Um, yeah, especially with the loom. Um, it's nice. Um, have you been putting her yarn in a bowl? Um, you might try just putting the bowl um, right, right below her feet and say um, to pull out several, um, you know, arm lengths first before she gets started. So kind of to pull out just, just enough um, kind of you know, one, two arm lengths, so it's not um, so tight coming off of the, the 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 ball that you're using. Hi, good morning, Teresa. Okay, Robin, we'll see you later. Uh, what looms behind me? This is um, from Cindy Wood. Here's another version. This is Cindy Wood loom. They're made of uh, MDF, and then these um, pegs. I'm not sure if they're nylon pegs, but um, yeah, Cindy d like c i n d loom dot com or cindy wood oh crafts dot com but i think you can also go to premium looms or premium knitting looms dot com uh yeah so they are handmade in the u s uh by a family uh they were actually started as a four h project i believe um that family does it together good morning erica good morning hi ada Marianne, hi, Liz. Oh, she says, I'm so glad you're back. How was your trip? My trip was good. It was, um, excuse me. Oh my gosh. I got yarn fibers in my nose. Um, my trip was exhausting. <laughs> it was really fun to, uh, meet people that, um, I've worked with. I was saying earlier in the broadcast, um, to meet people that I've worked with, um, just different companies or different bloggers and, um, you know, people that I've chatted with, um, either, you know, even once or twice a year or even like nearly every week. And it was just really fun to meet them in real life and give them a hug. And I'm telling y'all, we had like, we were done. I see. We were done on the showroom floor by six or seven and we had classes and stuff. I only did showroom stuff for two days, but the other two days before that, um, I was doing classes and stuff. And, um, so after dinner we would go directly to like go change and get our stuff and then like stay in the lounge or bar area of our hotel. It had a really, really big lounge area that was, there was a bar, but it was like, it felt more like a lounge and they were really good about having like these nice big seating areas. So we were sitting there knitting it up and um one of the first nights or second night um uh, Marley came in late with somebody else i didn't realize she was staying at the same hotel i was so um she came in and we're like oh my gosh hey like come sit down and so she happened to have uh some of her stuff with her and that was really fun and we got to we all got to sit and knit together, which was cool. I've taken some classes with Marley, and I've run into her at events and stuff, but we haven't ever got to sit down and knit. She was the only other knitter with me. Like, everybody else was crocheting. Like, seriously? <laughs> but that's cool. <laughs> A lot of times in knitting circles, you know, it's usually people knitting and then a few people crocheting. So it was always on the other end. So it was kind of fun. Hey, Carissa, good morning. Uh, Alicia says knitting board have a hat and scarf done in white for hat. Yeah, I'm sure they do. They've got lots of sets and stuff. <sighs> Heather says, 
Okay, Heather's in a craft group and want to start something on a loom. What should I tell them to get? What should I teach them? Um, <clears throat> Heather, you want to do everything on the loom? I mean, you know, a lot of times it's easy just to say, start with a scarf or start with a hat. I mean, a hat is shorter, but you've got a few more things to kind of teach so if you want to just be simple, just start them on a hat and I mean, uh, start them on like it, maybe even a tube scarf, you know, where they just go round and round and round and round. Um, and then they can cinch it up, um, with a pom pom or tassels. That's actually a really big thing right now. Um, if you could like put it together flat and do some tassels, oh my word, got to tell you. So I was over at the Clover booth and one of the things I did not video for you, but I will make a video on, um, I brought back these new tassel makers and um, oh, they're so much easier to use. But she also used this other tool um, to make the little thing that like holds the tassel. So it's way better than just using a strand of yarn to hold it. Um, like you can do some really decorative decorative things but there's this other tool that takes it and twists it with another yarn and it it twists them together so it twists them in the two opposite directions and then they go together and it makes a more substantial yarn and you know how like you know how you can make a you can get that twine or thread um that's a two color and people tie their packages together and it's real popular i was like you could make your own i mean you have a ton of yarn why not make it and it doesn't like kink over like it's not all on itself right you could actually roll it into a ball and then make something else so if you are wanting to ply some stuff together um i'm not sure that i would do a huge amount i mean this is made for mainly tassels and stuff but um, but yeah, it was really cool. So I'd like to show you the tad new tassel maker, but also this little cord maker. I don't know the name of the cord maker off the top of my head, but, um, I'm, I don't think they gave that one to me. I think I'm waiting on that one. Hey, Joanne says she saw me publish it. Yes. Thank you for that pattern. So we have the stripes stadium stripes hat, which is the loom version. And then the stadium stripes knit hat, which is the needle version. Um, I didn't want to call them a different name, so that's why the URL, you know, the link is going to start say a little bit different. I'm kind of calling my game day a hat. Okay, now, I'm going to just tell you, full disclosure. So, Joanna's rooting for the Patriots, so she's not rooting for this color. <laughs> and I'm not necessarily rooting for the Eagles, although I did call that the Patriots and Eagles would go to the Super Bowl. And I don't even watch. Like, I'm serious. Like, I don't I don't watch that one. Um, so I like went and looked at stats like a month and a half ago and I'm like, who would go? And my brother told me last night he was like, You should have told me I would have placed a bet. You did pretty good. Sorry, my needle's sticking through. Hold on. Um, but like I'm in Texas. I should be rooting for the, the Cowboys. Well, I'm in North Texas. I should be rooting for the Cowboys, right? And my husband, he roots for the Broncos. So <laughs> this is all the wrong color for him. But I thought this looked like a stadium with like its yard lines, right? Like, doesn't that look like it? Come on, give me some love. Do y'all think that's cool? I think it's cool. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, Robin, I think she did it for her kids, Cub Scouts. Or something anyway but like this is um good I got some hearts yay thank you for the hearts um I thought it would be fun for like anything like if you want to go cheer on your volleyball or basketball team for your kids school or just yeah make them for pep rally day um good anytime anyway I know that I should have come out with this in the fall or something but better late than never <laughs> it's there now um whatever Inspiration doesn't always strike when we want it to, right? <laughs> when I try to make something that's like, you know, oh, I've got to make something for, it just doesn't work. But this one, I, I was, I think it was really good. Lisa Albert, I'm not sure if she's on yet. She was making the slip stitch tweed for the blanket that, um, that we did back in the fall and she's like, oh, I'm going to try it, um, in knitting in the round and she worked it up on her loom and she made it she made it a little different than this the brim was different and the the um the 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 crown or top is different and so we worked out some things and um changed up a bit and wrote the pattern out so she did great she actually helped knit up um several of the samples that you saw and then I worked through those to make the video and um 
anyway, I hope that you like, do you guys like that I did a counterclockwise and a clockwise video um, for you? I hope that you like that. I hope I did that right. I just did that opposite because this video is flipped. <laughs> I think I did that right. <laughs> anyway, um, okay, Joanne's got some advice. When her daughter was three and won a loom knit, I wrapped her loom for her and had her knit the stitches over. Oh, well, that works too, yeah. Hey, we have a new subscriber, Casey. I don't know if you're watching, but I just saw a little pop-up. Thank you for subscribing, Casey. Um, you almost missed me, Joan. I'm still here. <laughs> I'm still here. We're only 30 minutes in. Kaseed, uh, you're welcome, says your wonderful thanks for help. I missed you on Mondays. I missed you guys, too. Um, I got really sick. Um, the My uvula in the back of my throat, like, randomly got sick and it's weird because it happened to me last year and they said well that's weird so anyway I had that happen and then I had a relapse and I don't know but then and I ended up going out of town so I've had like we had the holiday we had we had Christmas that fell on a Monday we had New Year's that fell on a Monday um I was sick <laughs> Then I had a relapse. <laughs> then I went out of town. So I've been gone for like five weeks. I think I, I think I did one video in between there. Um, hey, Rosario from New York City. New York City. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Can I just say, I know she said New York City. I know that this is a musical on video. But has everybody seen The Greatest Showman? We, need, we should have like a, because it's so good, we should have like a knitting competition. Like who is inspired by The Greatest Showman? Maybe we should like make something. Is anybody, and I want to talk to the loom knitters out there too, or knitters, you felt like, you know, you stick out like a sore thumb because you're different. You know, and, uh, and, and it could be about anything. But even just sitting there like in a knitting circle and I'm the only loom knitter. Like that's how it was when everybody was crocheting. I was the only one knitting and I was loom knitting. <laughs> and I was like, this is me. And, um, but then, yeah, so I saw it. By the way, I was sleep deprived. My husband took me. I have been really wanting to see it. I come back from the airport and we go sit down and I was like, I'm hungry. Like I was super hungry. And he took me to the, one of those movie eatery things. You pay a little bit more and you buy some lunch and sat down and listened to it. And I'm like, this is me. Oh, oh, oh. And I'm like, I'm singing. It's top of my lungs with this thing. No one else is in there because I've heard the song now. It was so good. If you have not seen The Greatest Showman, you've got to go see it. So good, so good, so good. If you've ever felt like a misfit or an outcast or whatever reason, um, go see this movie. Total movie plug. This is not a movie, like, Facebook page. I'm just saying, it's so good. So, anyway. All right, Lynn, back to knitting. <laughs> Which interchangeable needles uh, do you like best? I love Knitter's Pride, gotta say. Um, I'm sure there's more out there that I would enjoy, um, probably Addy Clicks or something, but I enjoy, I, I use two different ones from Knitter's Pride. Um, the first set I ever got was Carbons, which is this one, these, these are Carbons and they are, um, they're, they have like this carbon filament, um, uh, main needle and then the tip is um uh metal sorry i just i moved some i moved something i shouldn't have um anyway so that's that and then i have the um dreams one which i'm actually holding my stitches with these dreams ones and these are a i keep wanting to say they're they're uh birch but they're not i think these are actually maple yeah Anyway, the dreams, and they, they end them with like a Z. Anyway, I really like them. They're really smooth, feel really good. Um, now, I have these Addy ones you've seen me use before. These are um, fixed circulars. So, like, see, they don't, they don't come off of this cord. And I've used these a lot when I'm working with, um, say, Bernat um, Blanket, because uh, I think they slide really well, and I like the, the kind of blunt tip on them. Um, so those are those are kind of the needles that you see me use a lot. If you if you ever want to see different things that I've used, um, go to um, my Amazon store, um, just Amazon Amazon.com/shop. Uh, 
slash good knit kisses and you can see different things that I've got in my stash. It's not necessarily everything in my stash. Um, there's some yarn I added recently, fox yarn. I haven't tried that. That's the only thing that's in there and I'm, I've meant to. That was like a t-shirt yarn. I was just trying to find a source for it. Um, but I just got a new source called Macaroni Yarn. I'm waiting to see if they get a manufacturer in the U.S. because it's t-shirt yarn and I have an idea and I want to redo my mesh bag and do it in t-shirt yarn. Do you guys want to see that? Um, anyway, I'm uh, moving on. Corey, good morning from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Way, yay! That's awesome. Love you and learned so much from you with loom knitting. Thank you so much, Corey. I'm so glad you joined me here. Thanks for watching. Uh, Alicia, Karen Cake has number nine weight yarn. Oh, yes, Karen Cake has that um, thick one. <gasps> There's some really good stuff coming out from Red Heart, y'all. I went to their booth. Oh, there was some stuff that I cannot talk about, but please keep an eye on Red Heart. Um, yeah, I'm just saying, I don't know all the things that I can't say, so I'm just not saying anything, but go check out Red Heart, <laughs> Red Heart Yarn. Um, they had, they had like I think they actually won a booth design, actually. It was really good. If you saw that replay where I talked about Marley's yarn, you can see kind of the outside of it. And there's a couple of words that kind of might trigger you to hear when you see them, when people start talking about them. So go look at that video. Um, but I didn't see, there's a couple little uh, mannequins, but you can't see the yarn stuff. Hi, Miss Christine from Kissimmee. Hi, Teresa. Good morning. She's in Strathmore, Alberta. Oh, there's my beginner needle playlist. Thank you so much, Joanne. Yeah, I'll click on that playlist later on and check out all the videos for a beginner needle knitter. Um, I've had actually I've had uh, several lately um, kids and moms um, who are like. 10, like moms of 10 and 11 year olds, um, using that video series, really, really enjoyed it. Um, so please check out that needle series. If you've got a kiddo preteen, uh, who, uh, is interested in knitting, uh, I go, I go slow. And in fact, when I introduce the video, I talk about that I'm a beginner. I had actually been doing, um, knitting for a few years when I started the video, but I was doing, I was more heavy handed on loom knitting at that time. And so I still called myself a beginner, even though I knew a lot. Um, but I don't focus on how you hold the yarn. I just focus on the mechanics of getting the stitch done and the mechanics of getting the purl stitch done. How many of you guys, show of hands, um, you know, you can hit that love button. Who had a hard time learning how to purl? Um, actually, whether you were on the loom or whether you were on needles, did you have a hard time learning to purl? Hit that love button because that, that seems to be a hang up for people and it can be a true pain point. I, I've seen where some people have, um, they've tried to learn that stitch and for whatever reason, um, it's, it was just a really hard experience. It could be the person teaching you. It could be just your frustration level. Yeah. Look at all those hearts coming through. It's such a thing. I mean, Oh my gosh, and all we want to do is stitch, right? <laughs> like, just get that darn stitch done. I was so desperate to learn, and I could not under, I couldn't get it. It was so hard for me. I'm like, what is wrong with me? Like, is something wrong with me because I'm not getting it, right? And so I taught myself how to knit backwards. And actually, I tried to do that, like, uh, last year, and I was like, how did I end up doing that anyway? I tried to knit backwards, so, like, I would knit going on with my, holding it with my left hand, and then I would flip it over um, and start working the opposite direction so that I could get some purl stitches just so I could see what stock and knit look like on the needles, right? I was so frustrated, but anyway, y'all saw all those hearts fly by. That is, that's what I'm talking about. And I just wanted to take away that, um, that hurt and, um, and also like the casting on and the binding off it, it made me so sad to hear stories of people who gave up knitting because they, they couldn't get the needles. They couldn't get a yarn on the needles or they couldn't get their knitting off the needles. So they couldn't cast on or they couldn't bind off or cast off. And they would say, um, 
oh, I'd always have to have this friend or this family member help me. And, oh, they've passed on now, and now I can't get it off the needles. Or it makes me sad. I want to learn, but I just look at it and give up. That's really, that breaks my heart because, because it just breaks my heart. <laughs> And I and I was like, no, this is not okay. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I, I did the knitted cast on. And I got to tell you, it's really frustrating to hear these YouTube comments sometimes because I, I had, I've had a lot of comments on my channel of saying, you're doing it wrong. You know, that's not a real cast on. And, you know, and so I would go on there and I'm like, that is a real cast on. It's a knitted cast on. And actually teach the knitted cast on in that series so that um, so that I can um, reinforce the knit stitch. Um, the slingshot or long tail cast on is a standard cast on that is taught by a lot of people, but um, and for beginners. But I tend to think it looks confusing. Like when you start telling someone, you know, hold it like this and do this and, and to go up here and do this and do this and, you know, and then do it again. I mean, this looks like cats in a cradle, you know, and it's very confusing to people. And so I taught, I, if you're having a hard time and you haven't done it yet and you are a loom knitter and you're wanting to needle knit. I, and by the way, I'm not saying that all loom knitters should needle knit. I'm just saying if that's what you wanted to do. But if you go and try the knitted cast on, the one I use in that series, what it does is it reinforces that knit stitch. And I think it's much easier to learn. So, um, yeah. <laughs> and then once you get going, you know, you might want to open up and learn other uh, cast ons. Uh, and then the bind off is, is still a reinforcement of that. Oh, I see a smile, a sad face. Okay. Um, okay, so, hey, Sherry. You're from the Cherokee Nation, and I'm going to totally botch the name in Oklahoma where you are, but you are my northern neighbor up in Oklahoma. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, hey, Laverne. First knitting experience was aluminum needles and ruffle yarns. Talk about slippery. Oh, my word. Yes. And did it fly off and it unravel? <laughs> it is easy to make those ruffle yarns, but it is really easy to lose them, too. <laughs> It's really slippery. Okay. Um, Lisa says, when are you going to get back into the recording studio? Are those songs still up on YouTube? They are so much fun and you're a great singer. Thank you, Lisa. Well, you can get them on iTunes. Um, I think they're on Spotify. Um, so I just have two songs out. Um, I'm, I'm very frustrated because <laughs> I have what's called a mechanical license. Um, to do to to sell the songs because basically it's a karaoke CD underneath it and then it's my words um, as a parody on top. But um, there's one particular um, recording company I don't want to say who but who makes all these big massive records for people recording artists and the, this particular song um, they're not wanting to give me the video synchronization license approval there's this particular song has several different um uh studios that are attached to it and only one of them's a holdout and doesn't want me to publish it on youtube and so i have to have what's called a video synchronization license i i could i could do what lots of other people do and put things up on youtube but i refuse to put things on youtube that i don't have full out permission for but if you want to know what it is <laughs> oh everybody's crying you're sad. I'm sad too. <laughs> I'm smiling, but it's frustrating. Um, <clears throat> so if you don't know what we're talking about, I did a parody on the, um, the Wrecking Ball song. Um, Miley Cyrus, um, she did Wrecking Ball. And so I did this song called Ball of Yarn. <laughs> you came in like a ball of yarn. I never sniff. Yeah, no, anyway, it's funny. And then, um, or I, I think it's funny. And then <laughs> the other one, um, what was the other one we did? Oh my gosh, my mind is escaping me. Oh, uh, you know the What What Does the Fox Say song? Like, have you ever heard that? What Does the Fox Say? So we did What Does the Yarn Say? And <laughs> so, What Does the Yarn Say? Knit, 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 purple, purple, purple. 
<laughs> I would love to do a video of that. I actually, West 7th Wool is a local um, yarn shop down here. And she's like, you can do it in my studio. We can, we can film it here. So I have people who want to do a video. Um, yeah. It's really just for fun. Seriously. <laughs> but... I, because I want to recoup from my cost, I, I need to put the ads on there. I mean, I guess I could just, I guess I should, could get somebody to full out sponsor it. And then, um, that's why there's a holdout because they don't want me to be able to put monetization on it. So anyway, <laughs> I just, but I've, I spent money in a studio, like a professional recording studio. <laughs> I'm like, I want to recoup some of my cost. <laughs> That's why I do that. Um, so anyway, thank you so much, Lisa, for asking. But yeah, if you want to check it out on Spotify or iTunes, go check it out. It's under, um, it should be published under Kristen Mangus. So just look for my name and see what's on there. Hey, Ada. Hey, Shanna. I see you jumping in. Hey, Leslie. New to commenting on your broadcast, but I've watched many. Thank you, Leslie, for joining me. You're in the Thumb of Michigan. If you guys are just catching me and you don't know who I am, I'm Kristen Mangus with Good Knit Kisses, and I teach how to knit and loom knit and crochet, um, not as much crochet, um, on my Good Knit Kisses YouTube channel. And I also teach on here. So on Facebook, you will uh, see me teach on the bro live broadcast. I can even jump in at any moment and show you something. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, I'm here every Monday, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, except we've had it quite a break with the <laughs> with the holidays and uh being sick <laughs> so uh we are stitching our love and learning new stitches and building them and letting ourselves soar in our new uh new learned talents and that's what we do here uh, the good knit kisses replays over the last two years so we're down season three season one is 2016 when we started uh, live broadcast and now we're starting to put those up on youtube.com slash gkktv so you can catch all the old replays in fact for a whole month i did a different um a different theme every day and even on fridays i did social media day where i like taught you some stuff i actually taught how to like one of the days i even took my um my phone and i videoed my phone and showed how i can edit a video on my phone so um i even talked about Ravelry one day, how to navigate Ravelry, how to input in your um, your stash and needles and hooks and all that stuff. So anyway, so that's a little bit on there. So if you want to go subscribe to that channel and uh, and start watching, that's like having someone sitting there while you're having um, your knitting and crochet moment. So thank you guys so much. Uh, Liz says that's so awesome. Did you find anything about your new bags? I wanted one with the sheep and the looms. Yeah, the bags, um, we're doing this. Um, ah! So we've got a fabric. <clears throat> it's supposed to be on order. Uh, and it takes a while to get it. And then um, and then she'll stitch them up into bags. Now, this is not the bag. Um, this is just a similar fabric. So it looks, it's going to be similar to this. And these sheep, that's like this one's like doing scrapbooking and stuff. That'll be a loom knitted sheet. Like the, it's like holding a loom. One of them's got a loom on its head, and one of them's like looks like eyeglasses, but it's an S loom. It's really fun, right? And uh, so the um, like the spinner will be here. The um, there's a knitter. There's a crochet. Uh, there's one with a crochet amiguri sheep. Where is it? Where is it? I don't see it. Anyway, um, oh there it is that one. Um, anyway, those are on there. And then the two luminate sheep and the background is actually a purple and it looks so cute. It's the color of the year. So I'm hoping, um, I'm hoping March, uh, it will come out and we'll do a large project bag. And then depending upon the success of that, I asked her to order some extra, uh, fabric so that maybe we could do fat quarters or we could do other styles of bags. So, um, those will be fun and they're going to be on limited um, supply. So they'll be like a hundred at a time, 75 to a hundred at a time. And so you just got to get it quick <laughs> and uh, we'll see, you know, if I need to make more at a time or have her make more at a time, then we will. Um, but we'll see how that works out. Uh, Alicia, I started learning, learning it with a KK loom, but washcloths are start. 
Yeah, washcloths or a scarf might be um, good to learn uh, on the loom. Yeah, washcloths are really great. Um, you can test out different stitch patterns on those. Um, the only thing is, um, if you're working with a cotton yarn that's um, a, a less expensive cotton yarn, it doesn't have much give, and so it can be kind of disappointing because your stitches may kind of feel either way too tight or saggy. And... Um, you know, but learning with like a worsted weight yarn or something um, uh, works really well or do like a wool or something. Not necessarily a wool for a washcloth, but um, for like a pot holder or something. Hi there, Moslavo. Um, I'm sorry. I always, I'm not sure if I said your, names right, <laughs> your name right, but I love when I see your name, I recognize it. Hey, Lisa. Oh, you think it looks like football laces on the ball? I know. I think it looks like it over and over again. I just... But I thought as a repeat, it was kind of fun because it kind of think, it reminds me of the yard lines on it. Because Seed says, I love my Broncos. I'm from Colorado. Yeah, we always cheer for the Broncos. We have we have more Broncos stuff around here than Cowboys. <laughs> um, yeah, Alicia. I'm sorry. I'm probably way behind in my comments. Martha says, many people crochet people be like cat lovers and dog lovers people. We can work, <laughs> we can work along and it, it work together. Oh my gosh. You're watching. Oh, Allison says, listen to the yarn. It will tell you what it wants to be. I was watching one of your new videos on GKK TV. Yeah, I listened to the yarn. I'm like, what do you want to be? What do you want to be when you grow up? Please tell me. Do you guys like stare at your yarn and say, what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh Alicia yes I was thinking that same thing Alicia says I want to make some steampunk from the greatest showman yeah there's a lot of that steampunk design in there isn't there thank you for the Amazon link to my store um, Joanne yeah so I've got product on there if you're just joining me there's product on the uh, amazon.com that I either talk about or stuff that I have and, and use and like so, yes, um, Red Heart Pooling. Okay, so you mentioned one of those. Red Heart Pooling did come out. Um, Mont Montalavo. Okay, so Red Heart came out with this thing called pooling. And so it is engineered to be able to um, uh, do the pooling for you without really thinking about it. Now, there's got to be a pattern attached to it or something. I don't know all the mechanics of that. But they were showing me all the samples of it and what the different colors work up to be. It was really cool. <laughs> it was really cool. Uh, so I don't know what that's like on uh, the loom, but um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, Red Heart Fair Isle, Erica says. Yeah, there is, um, I'm not sure if I can say it. Hmm. Super Saver has some stuff coming if they haven't talked about it. <laughs> say everything, ask for forgiveness later. One time I had a video taken down and I never said anything to you guys, but I said too much on something and had to have my video taken down. And I don't like that because there was some really good stuff in that broadcast too, but I had to lose the whole thing. So, um, Alicia says I want to learn how to crochet, but I'm learning Tunisian crochet. What's good crochet for a beginner? Um, I... I'm not sure that I would say it's a good crochet for a beginner, but, um, you know, I like my, um, I like my marshmallow crochet baby blanket. It works with a single and a, um, a, um, uh, single crochet and double crochet. And, um, once you get going, it's just super repetitive. In fact, someone had posted on, on my site, um, they made the marshmallow crochet baby blanket it was inspired and they made a log cabin version so like they color blocked you know making in that cool um uh log cabin and it's so big it looks like this just really funky modern blanket it's really cool um you'll have to go to the good knit kisses page after this broadcast and look at visitor posts and you'll see you guys if you want to post your projects to the wall um or questions be sure and answer other people's questions it's, it's a community here so I may not always get to everything, but um, it's cool to have you guys chat back and forth. Because Seed says, can you do a yarn shopping therapy day again? <laughs> do you guys like that? Um, I went one time, um, well, I've kind of done it a couple times, but yeah, I went to Joanne's um, after the election last year, 
and um, <laughs> and we just went shopping at Joanne's up and down the, <laughs> the lanes. I thought that would be a fun thing to do. Um, partly because I just I I needed some stuff at Joanne's. <laughs> Oh, Carissa says, I follow Marley. She's awesome like you. And Red Heart has some new awesome yarns. Yeah, but she is awesome. And there are some great yarns from them. Uh, Shanna says, the team hat could be done on a loom. Um, that is a multiple of eight. Yes, good question, Shanna. Yes. So this loom here is a multiple of eight. It's, tw it's 48 stitches for the main stitch pattern. To get this main stitch pattern, you need a multiple of eight. To do the one by one rib at the bottom, okay, you only need a multiple of two, but to get this stitch pattern, eight. Now, here's the catch. If you want to do the top or crown exactly the way I have worked it out, I put into the po into the blog post um, notes on which sizes you can do. So if you're like, oh, can I make this on the zippy loom? Okay. Yeah, you could. Um, you could do 24 and do like a super jumbo <laughs> seven yarn and do the hat out of that um, with 24 stitches. Um, you could make it on the small five eighths, 24 peg round loom and um, make it for a baby. So you could make a baby hat. Wouldn't that be fun? Um, and make it identical um, to, to this one. Okay. Um, you could also, the next size is also 72. So say you're doing a worsted weight on something. Uh, I'm not sure if one of these, now this one's a 64. I don't know if that next size is a 72 or not. Um, but if you have one, um, uh, an adjustable loom, like all in one, I think you could get 72 pegs. Um, that would work. And also 96. So if you wanted like a slouchy style in a three eighths, you could do worsted weight or even a sport, maybe a sport weight on there. Ha! Sport hat with sport weight. Um, <laughs> now, now these, these will be much smaller, of course, if you're working with a finer yarn. So these are, and by the way, these yarns here, this one's Bernat Softy Chunky, and this one's Bernat ba uh, Softy Chunky Baby, I think. No, I'm looking at the wrong one. Softy Baby. So this one is um, a five, if you use the baby one. If you use a regular one, it's a six. Um, and then this is a six, super bulky. Um, what else? What else? What else? So, I'm sorry, for the crown... If you want to do the crown, it has to be a multiple of six. So it's not a multiple of eight for the crown. So here's the deal. So if you're starting to do the math, and you're like, oh, it's a multiple of eight. Make sure it's also, also divisible by six. If it's not, it doesn't do the crown the way I did it. You don't have to do the crown the way I did it. Um, also, if you want to see, um, if you want to know how to make this, um, not finish the crown like normal and you want a ponytail hat, um, check out, um, Joanne did a, um, a thing, um, Joanne, what is the name of that one? Uh, I think we did it on the easygoing knit hat and we showed a ponytail hat version. And so you can see how the, um, the crown is made. So we have a blog on that. Um, on how to make on how to do the crown on that, and so she made one of the, our, our hats into a ponytail hat. Lisa says purling continental is an issue. Yeah, purling continental. I I can I can knit continental like just straight knitting, um, but when it comes to purling, that's a challenge for me. So I'm really trying to get better on that before I teach people. I've had several people ask me to teach people. Sorry, I'm looking at the time. Oh, it's ten o'clock. Um, I've had several people ask me how to do that and I just want to make sure that, um, I know all the ins and outs before I start teaching. Thank you, Debbie. I'm going to skip through some of these. I'm just, oh, Joanne says the knitted cast on was my favorite as a beginner because it's much easier to do. Mm hmm. And Liz says she stopped needle knitting because of trouble with her hands and got tired of stitches flying off the needles because I know the knit stitch can't get the, yeah, yeah. But now you loom knit, right? Hey, Jackie, I see, I see you jumped on. Love my song. <laughs> hey, Catherine in California. Leslie, you're having a snowstorm right now. Ooh. 
Okay, Kristen, there is a site that has a lot of patterns that I've seen um, not done yet on a video. Is there a way you could do some of them? I don't know if I can post the site. Um, Allison, why don't you just send it to me and see... Um, uh, it depends. I mean, if they're stitch patterns and we can convert them, um, we could totally do that. Um, if it's a, um, if it's someone else's pattern, I can't necessarily do that. I could talk to the person and say, Hey, would you like me to do that? Um, usually I, I don't cause I have a lot of things. Um, sorry. Uh, I've got other a lot of other things kind of on the burners that I'm trying to work on. So I don't necessarily ask for permission. I just won't do it. Um, but, um, but I've had where people ask me and they're the person who made the pattern and they'll ask me if I can do it. Um, yeah. Coral says, hi, Kristen. I started following you almost two years ago and you've inspired me to make, to, to start my own crafting business. Ah! Coral, that's awesome. I've been trying to catch up on your episodes on YouTube by Niagara Falls, Canada. Awesome. Oh, I've been to Niagara Falls, Canadian side. That is the best side. <laughs> that was amazing. I got to go at night and it was like towards midnight and it was beautiful. So beautiful. Not going to lie. Um, that is exciting. I'm very proud of you. I'm so glad that you started your own crafting business. Um, yeah, catch up on the videos. Go to the um, Good Knit Kisses TV channel and you'll get all of them. We've republished some select ones um, on the Good Knit Kisses um, uh, YouTube channel, especially if they're like blog style. I mean, um, especially if they're like an entire tutorial, we've we published some of those. Um, but we're going to put, be putting all of them in order um, up on goodknitkisses.com slash GKKTV. Hey, thanks for the Spotify, Lisa. That's the ball of yarn. <laughs> Uh, that's the song that I did. Uh, Jackie says the material is so cute. Looking forward to bed. Um, Liz wants to be on the bag waiting list. <laughs> you need to talk to, um, Lindsay at Erin Lane Bags. Yeah. Go like her page and say, I'm so excited about Kristen's loom knitting bags. <laughs> they're not just loom. I mean, they're like needle and, and loom and, and crochet. So, yeah, you have to say, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Go be an airline buddy bag member. She's got a, a group too, and you find out about things firsthand. And when she has a live sale, I think we're going to do like a live sale. So um, I may have you guys like join the group and then do it that way. We haven't figured out the logistics of how we're going to do the live sale because I don't want any of my followers to miss it. So I might be doing it with her and then we uh, share to this page. I'm not sure how that's going to go. So just um, probably be watching out more in March. Um, Jackie says, I try a new stitch pattern with little red hats on 24 peg loom. Uh, how did that work? Did you post them? I'm not sure if you have a question right there. Oh, Alicia, I, can, I don't have the answer for that one, for the Tunisian crochet stuff. If you want to learn Tunisian, um, there's a really good class. Um, I've seen portions of it, but, um, my friend, um, at Brittany with, um, be hooked crochet. She did a class with a uh, craftsy and I think she may have done an Annie's class. Anyway, she did a craftsy class, um, on Tunisian and go check it out, um, uh, with craftsy because, um, Brittany's really patient and really good. Uh, Shanna says the KB looms are all multiple of eight. Yes, that's good. Um, if they're also a multiple of six, then they will divide for that crown the way I showed it. So Melissa says, hi there. Do you do local meetups? Um, you just moved a few minutes back and so impressed by the huge learn yarn loving communities are scattered around the area. Um, it cut off the rest of what you're saying, but yes, I do. I have a, um, I have a knit and crochet group that meets, um, that meets up. So if you want to contact me, um, separately, then, um, let me know. Um, there's also a local group, uh, I think they call them the Texas Pearls. They actually meet up at my church. They're not part of the church, but during the week, uh, Wednesdays, they meet up at, um, Gateway North Fort Worth campus and, um, 
they love it. So <laughs> I don't get to join them that often, but uh, they they have that group there, and it's a pretty pretty good sized group. I've donated yarn to them before. Um, Martha says, I'd like to see you fall backwards into a pile of yarn yelling, Wee! Have fun! <laughs> yeah, that's what I want to do. <laughs> of course, we'd have to have a really big thing of yarn to fall back on. Maybe I'll get one of my kids to do it. <laughs> I don't want to wreck the yarn. <laughs> Thank you, Newsboy Messy Bun Hat. That's where it is. Goodnightkisses.com. Um, messy bun hat. Oh, that's funny. Why the link says tag in it? Uh, good morning in Canada, Giselle or Gazelle. What's up, Travis? <laughs> I see you. Hey, we have Anna in Croatia. Robin says you're still on. Yes, Robin. I got, I've been on this whole time. I saw you had to go and come back. Um, let's see. Okay. Jackie says, no, I didn't post them. You're mentioning something about trying a new stitch pattern. The little red hats are small, but gives you a chance to see something quickly. Yes, the little red hat. Okay, so like the 24 peg looms are really great to try stuff on. Um, I like testing stitch patterns on that um, 12 peg bloom loom. Do you guys have one of those bloom looms? Um, they're a three quarter gauge, um, extra large gauge loom, so they're pretty big. Um, but sometimes it's fun to test out um, test out stuff on there, especially if I'm testing something in the round that works with a multiple of two or four or something or you know, then I can easily, easily test it. So that's a good one. Okay, for the needle knitters, if you wanted to know about uh, this one, remember this is a stadium stripes knit hat. The pattern is up. If you're wanting a video on it, I will try and get to work on that. I do have another video that I've got to start filming soon um, for uh, another company coming up. And uh, this year is all about um, just... Um, I'm kind of doing a little bit more of a balance this year. Um, it's not as going to be as your inspirations heavy, although they have another video coming out of mine um, soon. I'm not sure what day. Um, but yes. <laughs> so if, uh, if you don't mind watching my videos and going over to the Good Knit Kisses um, YouTube channel and click subscribe and hit that alert button so you know when a video comes out. And if you want to see the replays of all of these and catch up on the last two seasons, you can go over to Good Knit Kisses um, TV, which is GKK TV. So either search for GKK TV, all one um, word with all the initials, or go to youtube.com slash gkktv, and that will take you there. Hit the subscribe and hit that bell icon, and you can just start playing them and play it in the background and listen to them, um, and it's like having your little your little knit night there with you. So um, I got alerts popping up. Um, Allison said, what did you bring back from your trip? I brought back yarn, yarn, and more yarn. I have a big double duffel bag that it was like one of those that like condenses down. I bought it at Walmart before I left. <laughs> and I stuffed that puppy. I did not want to check it because I was afraid it would like bust. Um, but it was stuffed full with yarn. Um, I got several more balls of this alpaca, Peyton's alpaca yarn. Um, yarn inspiration was there. Um, but I mean, I already knew that product. Um, I got some stuff from Premier Yarn. Um, I got a few little, bi little tiny balls of uh, Marley's new yarn, um, Chic Sheep. And then I got something from Paint Box. Have you guys gone to Love Knitting? Do you guys belong to Love Knitting or Love Crochet? Um, they have some yarn and patterns. And so I've got some of their stuff. Uh, let's see what else. What other yarn did I get? I got multiple things. I also have some stuff from Clover, some tassel makers that I got. Um, I saw this jelly art thing with, um, uh, a feather. Hey, do you guys do jelly? It doesn't have anything to do with knitting, but have you done jelly art? It was really fun. So I have this little, uh, deal, this little kit uh, I wanted my daughter to play with. Um, thanks Coral. Thank you. I love GKK TV. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, it's really interactive. Um, and of course, I try and like read the question once I say it because also oh, I get way behind too. you. So uh, hopefully that helps you guys and keeps it in context instead of me just staring at a screen and reading it. <laughs> I'm mean, staring at a screen, reading it inside my head. <laughs> and then you're like, what is she answering? Uh, anyway, I'm so glad you guys joined me. Um, 
I'll, uh, I've got new things coming up. If you have stuff that you want to see me do a live demo on, um, be sure and type it in the comments. Um, talk amongst yourselves. If you guys have conversations between yourselves in here, um, that's actually helpful to me that I can kind of, if I see sort of a conversation emerging about a topic, um, we can see about having a live demonstration. These, these, um, these live broadcasts are really good for that because it may not necessarily some, be something I put on the regular um, Good Nick Kisses YouTube channel, but on here on Facebook, um, we can we can play and learn and see um, see what we want to do. So uh, anyway, thank you again for joining me at Good Nick Kisses, where you stitch your love into your projects, learn how to build your skills, and let your stitches soar. I'm so glad you joined me today. I hope you have a great day and happy knitting and. Crochet. Bye everyone.